Hello students, welcome back to uh, English class. Today I will be again dealing with class 8 English and the name of the lesson is the third lesson from your textbook that is glimpses of the past. So that is the lesson that we're going to do today and then it will be good if you can have your textbooks with you because no matter how much content the teacher teaches you, you have to follow the textbook. Then only uh, you will be able to uh, get the content better. So if you can have your textbooks with you, let us start with the lesson. The name of the lesson is Glimpses of the Pass and it's in page number 36 of your textbook. Students, it's in page number 36. And then, glimpses of the past. Before uh, taking up any lesson, if you un try to understand the heading or the name of the lesson, then you get an idea about what we are going to study, okay? So when we say glimpses of the past, past would mean Something that has already be, uh, happened, isn't it? So we're going to study about uh, the past events and then glimpses would mean having a sneak peek or having a look at the lesson. So today we're going to study about a history topic. So this is the topic and you might be a little confused students. Maybe you must be wondering that, oh, this is an English class and we are taking up history. But uh, like, like I've mentioned in one previous class also, whatever subjects that you take in the school or whatever subjects are uh, being given to you, all those are important. For example, um, if your mother gives you 500 rupees and lets you go shopping, then in order to spend the money and buy the things that you want, you have to know simple calculation, isn't it? Yeah, so that is how mathematics is uh, ha helping you in your everyday life, right? Same with science. If you are to move uh, a heavy object from one place to another, or maybe if you are to uh, do some simple carpentry works, in all those you have to apply science ideas, right? So, and even for English also, if you study and if you are able to learn new words and sentences, then you can use it in your everyday uh, speaking of English language. And that is how you can express yourself, right? And then for history also, history is again very important because whatever things that have happened in the past that has shaped our future, that is, sorry, that has shaped our present times and then the future also. That is why history is also important. The things that you study in your social sciences. Again, same with geography. Even though you cannot travel the whole world also, if you know geography, then you can locate where India is and then different countries of the world, the climatic conditions. So that is how all the subjects are blended together in your school so that you can have knowledge about your everyday life. Okay. So today's lesson is about about a history and then uh, but remember that this is an English class okay so in your history lesson uh, the fourth chapter if I'm not mistaken I think that is the fourth chapter of your SS uh, lesson you have studied about the revolt of 1857 isn't that revolt of 1857 so this topic is there in your SS textbook, right? So if you can connect this with your today's English lesson, then it will be helpful for you, okay? And students, if you can see the lesson, if you can have a look at the lesson, this is written in a comic form, right? So when I say the word comic, this is something that is written or done in a pictorial form. That means a comic is something where you can see a lot of pictures also and some of the things that you can see are the bubbles. So here in the bubbles, when the character speak, it is as if the character is speaking his mind, isn't it? So you can see the speech bubbles in the comic and then uh, the characters also and then the background picture. And if you like reading comic uh, books or 
comics, then some of the different types of comics are the humorous ones. Humorous, humorous comics would mean uh, example like the Tinkle comics, the Archie comics, all those are a little humorous and funny in nature, right? So uh, those are the humorous ones and sometimes some comics are written in the form of uh, fairy tales are also written in the form of comics, okay? So examples of fairy tales can be uh, Snow White, Cinderella, and then Rapunzel, all those are written in the comic form so that children can find the lesson, uh, the story interesting. That is why those are written in the comic form also. And sometimes comics can be about a factual description also. When I say factual description, it means truth about some things. So factual description here would mean about real life incidents and things that have uh, really happened in uh, the, the, the present times. So those are factual descriptions. So here in this lesson also, this is a lesson about a factual historical description. Factual historical description so that means this lesson is not humorous in nature or this is not a fairy tale but it is historical that means something that has happened in the past and it is factual that means not imaginative but the truth okay so this lesson is a factual historical description all right and for comics, you might think that the lesson is, you know, not very interesting. But as you go on reading the lesson, you'll find uh, things and information that are uh, very important. And, you know, the history of India that has already, you know, happened in the past. And then those are the things that have shaped our present times. Okay. So this is about, if you look into the first portion of page number 36 page number 36 before you read here are some pictorial pictorial glimpses of the history of our country from 1757 to 1857 that means this story this lesson is about the history of india in a span of 100 years within this 100 years period of time whatever things that had happened in India, those informations and things and incidences are given in this lesson. These pictures and speech bubbles, I told you about the speech bubbles, right, will help clarify your understanding of the conditions that led to the event known as the First War of Independence in 1857. So the First War of Independence in 1857 is also known as the revolt of 1857 okay so this revolt of 1857 is known as the first war of independence in indian history because uh, uh, all the kings the peasants the farmers the artisans all the citizens of india they came together to fight against the british rule that is why this incident the revolt of 1857 or the first war of independence in 1857 that is that event is very important in the history of india okay so Again, before we start the lesson, it is very important to understand, we all know that the British came to India and they ruled India for so many years, isn't that? So why did the British come to India in the first place? That was because of economic reasons. The British people, they came to India first directly, initially, it was not to rule India, okay, but for economic reasons. So when I say economic, it is to do with business, right? And it was said that during the ancient time, India was a very rich country, rich in spices, rich in precious 
uh, precious items like gold, silver, diamond. So sailors, when I say sailors, those times, the early times, we didn't have proper mode of transportation, right? And we didn't have aeroplanes also. So what sailors, they would do is they would travel from, from one place to another in the ocean. So they will travel for months and months and then the merchants, the businessmen, they would travel from one country to another in their big ships and then exchange goods with one another. So initially, the British came to India for economic reasons because India was a very rich land. and. After they came to India, they saw that the whole country, if you can imagine the map of India, it is a very big subcontinent in Asia, right? So when they came to India, uh, India was ruled by many kings and princes. So all uh, the whole country was divided into small, small princely states. Princely states would mean ruled by separate, separate kings and princes. So there was disunity, there was no coordination, or the kings and the princes, they were not in friendly terms with one another. So what the British did was, they were very cunning people, remember, and they are advanced also, isn't it? They are educated, so that is how they understood the psychology of the Indians. They understood how the Indian people live, their society live, and how they existed. So one very important thing that the British noted was the kings and the princes, they constantly quarreled with one another. That means every now and then wars would happen. So if you look into ancient Indian history, there are so many wars that happened, right? And if you go to class 9, 10, 11, 12, you will study about the, those wars in detail. Okay? So the British, they saw that India was not uh, unified, they were not cooperative with one another. That is why the British people, they took advantage of that situation. They took advantage of that situation and firstly, I told you that they came for economic reasons, isn't that? So the British East India Company, if you can remember the name, the British East India Company, they came as a company to do business with India, but uh, uh, in the span of the years, as the time went by, slowly and steadily, they took control over the political, social, economic, and then religious uh, scenario in India. Okay, so, How did the British people, the British East India Company, uh, took control over the politics of India? How did the British control the politics of India? I told you that the kings and the princes, they were constantly at war with one another, right? That means the whole of India had political instability. That is why the British, they would provoke the kings and the princes to fight with one another. They would provide the weapons and then in the midst of all the disunity, the British would take over the lands and the states. Okay, So that is how they took control over our politics and then social also. Before the British came to India, the Indian subcontinent, the whole of India had a very uh, rich uh, society, okay? And then the society was divided into different, different classes. You must have studied in your essays also, right? The Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, the Shudras. So all those were the social class. But So it was compartmentalized. That means uh, each caste did, uh, didn't have the right to go to another caste. That means the social system was very defined and it was very, uh, what to say, it was very clustered. So after the British came to India, the whole thing was uh, hampered again, the social system, our living conditions, and then the habits or the uh, things that we do in our everyday life, all the, those were disrupted by the British uh, rule okay and then religious also 
we all know that in India there are different religions, right? So the majority is the Hindus and the Muslims. So even the kings also, they had Hindu kings, they had Muslim kings, and because of religious reasons also, they were constantly fighting with one another. So the British people, they took advantage of all those situations and then uh, the Christian missionaries also. Because uh, remember, uh, India mostly had Hindus and uh, Muslims, right? So what the British did was they commissioned the Christian missionaries so that the Hindus and the Muslims, they can be converted into Christianity. So again, this hurt the re religious sentiment of the Indians, okay? That's why they were not happy with the British rule, all right? And then immediate effect. Another reason for the revolt of 1857, or remember students, we are doing about the first war of Indian independence or uh, the revolt of 1857, right? Both are the same. So another reason was the immediate cause or we can say the military cause. So here, the British people, after they came to India and you know they put their dominance in India, uh, many uh, Indians were uh, employed as soldiers in the British Army, okay? So soldiers, the high class or the officers were occupied by the British people and Indians were employed as the low class soldiers. So uh, a certain and field uh, rifle was introduced in the British Army. So this rifle had a cartridge or a, a certain uh, opening in the rifle and it had to be bitten off by the mouth of the soldiers and the the cartri cartridge it was covered with grease it seems grease would mean a fatty uh, uh, thing so the fat was covered with the f uh, the grease was uh, mixed with the fat of cows and pigs it seems so that is we all know that um, the hindu people they don't eat beef right because cow is supposed to be a sacred animal for the Hindus. And for the Muslims, the Quran, it forbids them to have pork, isn't it? Yes or no? So that is how the pork and the beef grease, it ignited anger among the Indian soldiers. And that is how they revolted against the British rule, the British officers. So that became the immediate cause of the revolt of 1857. So if you can remember this political, social, religious, immediate cause, uh, you must have studied it in your SS class also. So if you can remember all these events, then this lesson will be more easier for you, all right? So let us go into the lesson. Here the lesson is uh, divided into different parts actually it is divided into nine parts and then in every part we can see pictures the characters are talking with one another and if you can have a look at your textbooks you can see the background also and if you uh, concentrate and un try to understand the background then you will understand more about the history of india okay so the first one the martyrs The first part is the martyrs. Here, the martyr would mean somebody who is killed for his or her beliefs. That means here the martyrs are the freedom fighters. Okay, freedom fighters who fought for India's independence. So here in the first picture, if you can see, this is a function going on in Delhi. That means this picture must be the present times, okay? Not the past, but the present times. And then here in the picture, a woman is uh, reading out a poem, okay? And the poem goes like this. Oh, my countrymen, let your eyes fill with tears as you recall the sacrifices of India's martyrs. So here in the poem or here in, uh, in the picture, the woman is saying that if you can remember the, the sacrifices of the martyrs, people who sacrificed their lives for our country, 
if countrymen, the whole of Indian citizens can remember the martyrs. So in the second picture of your textbook, here are some pictures of the freedom fighters. So right in the middle, you can see Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, isn't it? He was the first prime minister of free India, right? So along with him, you can see Mahatma Gandhi also, Subhash Chandra Bose, Bhagat Singh, Rani Lakshmi Bai, so all these persons, they were the ones who fought against the British rule and then uh, now we are a free India, right? India is a free country. But because of their sacrifices, because of their works, we were able to drove out the British former country. Okay? So that is why these important persons, they are known as martyrs. And if you can go to the second part of the uh, lesson, the company's conquest. So here, the company would mean the British East India Company. Okay. So from 1757 to 1849. So here in the whole uh, comic strip in the lesson, this portion, you can understand about the political situation of India. Like we have, uh, I have told you in the pre uh, earlier part of the lesson. So if you look into the first picture, you can see the map of India, isn't it? And here in the map of India, the yellow portions, those are the Indian princes. That means the yellow part of the country, the, this indicates that these portions of the country, they were ruled by kings and princes, okay, different kings and princes. And then the pink portion, that is the British territory. So we already discussed earlier that initially first the British came to India for uh, doing business in India, right? Not to rule India. So first they came to India, this was the political condition of India. That means most of the Indian con subcontinent was ruled by kings and princes and very few uh, territories were ruled or occupied by the British and this occupied territories also they exactly didn't rule but here business or economic uh, uh, transactions were going on between the British and Indian people. Okay. So if you can look at the second picture, here you can see a picture of a king or a prince and then uh, besides and around him, you can see nobles surrounding him, isn't that? Indian princes were short-sighted. Short-sighted would mean not thinking about the future, okay? Thinking only about now or the present times and not having uh, thoughts about the or plans about the future. So here, this picture says that Indian princes and kings, they were very short-sighted. That upright Raja Ba, Call the English merchants, they will help me to defeat him. So here in this picture, the king is saying that, you know, uh, he is having an enemy with the neighboring state and then he is telling his nobles to uh, take the help of the British merchants so that the, the British merchants will help him to defeat that another state. So that is a discussion going on between them. And then the people had no peace due to such constant fights. So remember I told you that the princely states and the kings, they were constantly fighting with one another, isn't it? So, you know, in every uh, courtroom or uh, in every king's palace, there were constant meetings about how to defeat one another, okay? So because of this constant fights, there was political disunity in India, okay? And if you look at the third picture, the rivalries helped the East India Company and it could easily subdue Indian princes one by one. So if you look into this picture, uh, there's so, there is fighting going on, right? War is going on. And then you can see soldiers fighting with one another, isn't it? So the British East India Company, the British East India Company took advantage of the political situation, the political disunity that was going on in India, and one after the other, they took control over the states, the Indian territories, okay? 
A far-seeing ruler like the brave Tipu of Mysore fought the British till he died fighting. So here in this picture, you can see a certain king. So he is a brave Tipu of Mysore. So Mysore is in the southern part of India. So he, uh, this king, he ruled uh, Mysore. And then he was a brave king, it seems. And then he didn't like the British control over India. And it was said that he died fighting with the British. That means in order to save his kingdom, he was constantly fighting with the British people and then that is how he lost his life. Okay. And in the next picture, how did Indians react to this conquest? So the conquest, the, the British East India Company, they were constantly trying to take control over the Indian territories, isn't it? So how did the British people react to this situation? So there were two groups of people, according to the two pictures. The first picture here, they are saying that this is the rich people, the kings and the princes, okay, the high class people. So they are saying that they, they are with the British people. That means they are supporting the British people because in order to defeat one another or in order to defeat another, other kingdom or territory, the British are giving them weapons and money. So that is why they supported the British uh, East India Company. Okay, and in the second picture, you can see some very wise men. Okay, so the, the wise men they are discussing among themselves. The white man has killed or dethroned our kings. And then another person is saying some kings were not good, but after all, they were of this land. Now we have become slaves of foreigners. So, slaves of foreigners. This statement is very important, students. Slaves of foreigners. So here, Slaves would mean the Indians, okay? Remember, the British people, they come, came to India. It was not the Indians they uh, went to Britain, but it was the British people who came to India. But the Indian people, they were becoming like slaves, okay? And then foreigners here would mean the British people. That means in India, in our country or in our own land, we have become slaves to outsiders. So that is why some wise people or uh, learned people, some uh, old men, they were worried that slowly and steadily British people will take control over the whole of India and we must support our kings because the kings were getting uh, swayed away by the British policies because the British people, they were giving them money and weapons to, uh, you know, uh, instigate the fightings with one another. That's why the common people or the learned people, they were very worried, okay? If you can go to the next page. Here, this talks about the British rule, okay? So the British rule, a period from 1765 to 1836. So this was a period where uh, the British people, they, they uh, occupied most of the Indian territories. So that is why this period of time in Indian history is known as the British rule, okay? So if you can see the first two pictures, here, it talks about the subject of religion. Religious leaders preach ideas like untouchability and child marriage. So here, untouchability would mean, remember, the Indian society before the British came, you know, uh, we were a very orthodox uh, society. That means we were clinging to our beliefs and we are very firm in our beliefs. So untouchability was one belief of the uh, Hindu society, Hindu religion. And here, this would mean that the high class people, the Brahmins, they are not supposed to touch the low class people. So the low class people, they do all the manual works, right? They do the cleaning and then whatever the high class people uh, don't feel like doing, those will be done by the low class people. So that is why the high class people, they felt that the low class people, they are dirty, okay? So that is why 
they were known as untouchables. That means the clean high class people, they are not supposed to touch the low class people. And then child marriage here would mean, um, you must have seen it in movies and documentaries in the Hindu society. They marry off their children, especially young girls. They are married at a very young age, isn't it? So that is child marriage. So things like untouchability and child marriage, those were prevalent in Indian society, okay? Anyone who crosses the seas loses his religion. So here in the picture, you can see a Hindu priest, isn't it? A sadhu. So here, this sadhu, he is preaching the people that if you cross the sea or if you, if you travel to another country, remember I told you that during the previous times, uh, sailing in the sea was the only mode of transport. So uh, here the sadhu is telling his uh, followers that we shouldn't travel to uh, another land by sea. Otherwise, we would lose our religion and identity. But actually, all these are superstition, isn't it? These are not true, right? And then in the second picture, somebody is screaming. All the misery in the world is due to woman. So he's complaining that all the misery in the world, all the bad things that are there in the world is because of women. But actually, this is also a superstition, right? A wrong belief because women are not like that, isn't it? So if you study the two pictures, what did you understand, students? Here it shows that people of India, we are very orthodox, we are backward, and on top of that, we are not educated. So education is something that you learn in school if you go, right? If you, get, uh, if you go to school, you get knowledge, you get information, and then you also become a better person, right? But here, the Indian society during the olden times was very orthodox. They were not educated. That's why they, you know, uh, didn't respect the woman. There were discrimination against women. And then there was, you know, social evils like untouchability and child marriages were prevalent. So that is why, because the Indians were ignorant, because the Indians were not educated and very orthodox, and they clinged on to their religious beliefs, that is why the British, they took advantage of our situation, okay? And if you look into the third picture here, you can see uh, two British uh, officers or two British men, and then somebody is bowing down to the, uh, to the Britishers, right? So here, the Britishers, they're telling that, you know, this native people, they are so unworthy of trust and incapable of honesty. That means, insulting and scor scorning the uh, uh, Indians and saying that, you know, these Indians, they're not human beings also, and they're not educated. They are, you know, supposed to be third class people, and they're not learned like us. That means insulting the Indians, right? And the Indian man standing right next to him is agreeing with the Britishers. That means he's ignorant, he's illiterate, he's not educated. That, that is why he is not an understanding that the British people, they are insulting the Indians. So without knowing anything, he's just serving the white masters, okay? And if you look into the fourth picture, here you can see that there is a British landlord, and then you can see farmers and peasants, they're very worried, right? So this is what well, this was the situation in 1836. It is said that in the year 1836, uh, around 15 lakh Indians died of starvation. So the meaning of starvation, I told you in another previous class also, it is uh, dying to, due to extreme hunger, right? So when you don't take food or if food is not available, then you will definitely die. So 15 lakh Indians were dying of starvation because the crops were not good. And then the Britishers, they were levying high taxes on the Indian farmers. So they cannot pay the taxes. That is why they became poorer and poorer. Okay, so that will be uh, all for today's lesson and for the next remaining part of the lesson, we will continue in the next class. Thank you so much.